there's been a lot of feelings going on, right? I don't know, these are a few that I think are in the air and certainly ones that I've been cycling through in the last week or two. Sad, disheartened, lifted up, brought back down, weary, hopeful, uncertain, anxious, fearful, agitated, in the dark, in the light, centered, scattered. Have you felt any of those? If so, we feel together. And I wonder too if you can see what I see, because I see a star. I'm not kidding, a star <laughs> shining in the night, a light that is breaking through. I see and feel a sense of hope. Could it be a glimpse of spiritual awakening? I pray it is so, and I'm pretty sure you pray with me. 2020 is supposed to be about perfect vision. And here we are in this year. I don't know about you, but it has felt pretty blurry to me. I haven't had that kind of clarity of vision, although it's starting to get a little bit clearer. And when we talk about that vision, it's not so much about getting our eyes checked here, our physical eyes, but it's a check too on that third eye, that eye that Jesus talked about is letting your eye be single so that we can see through the spiritual eye, that we can see a higher ground or a deeper place where that foundation of love is there for us. Most of us, save maybe the infectious disease folks, would not have foreseen a pandemic. And most of us, I'm guessing maybe all of us, wouldn't have imagined that people all around the world in every shade of the rainbow would begin to speak out in unison that black lives do indeed matter. And that is what is happening now. It took 400 year, 401 years for voices, this many voices, enough of a critical mass to begin to shift the tide, to begin to change what, need, what needs to be changed, what has needed to be changed for so long. So when we talked about spiritual awakening happening during this pandemic, would you have ever guessed it would look like this? Nobody knew, right? None of us knew. And yet here we are at the precipice of real spiritual awakening and real societal change, where the values that we say we believe in, the ideals of democracy and the values of spirituality begin to align. You know that pledge that we all take, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, that pledge? It feels a little truer now, a little more possible than it did. Who would have known that yet another black man would have been killed by police and all of this would have happened in response? That a police officer would have kneeled on a man's neck for nine minutes and we were in the middle of a pandemic where we all, weren't all so busy running here and there that we actually stopped and felt and listened and demanded change. We couldn't make this stuff up. <laughs> we couldn't align these things. There's no way we know when something happens and we say, ain't it awful, that we can see the whole picture. And so there is good emerging. There are possibilities emerging from great tragedy. So now we might see with a little clearer vision than we saw just yesterday. Now we might be able to cast our eyes into a kind of future that we may not have dared imagine even a few days ago. You know, the Beatles said, you may say, I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. And certainly we are together, united across the world. It's really heartening for me to see the goodness of people. You know, that the, the goodness of humanity is on display all around the world, that protests have become more and more peaceful throughout this week. People know how to be true <laughs> to the divine in us, to walk that talk. So there's a sense of, of oneness, a sense of seeing that oneness. There's a sense of knowing that it is all for one and one for all, truly 
that we are talking about now. The troubadours sing about it beautifully. So let's take a little break and watch. Do not be afraid. 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 Do not be
We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. Do not be afraid. Love. There were a lot of lines in that song I enjoyed, but that, those really resonated. And, and that's a carrying forward of the message for all of us. You know, back in biblical times, astrologers were the wise ones and the seers of the day. The wise men who followed the star of Bethlehem to the birth of Jesus were astrologers, we're told. And you know that story I told a couple weeks ago about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was an astrologer, a seer of the day, who could see from a couple provinces away that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not falling down in worshiping the golden statue that the king had ordered them to do. And so the astrologer tattled on them. And you know the story then, they were thrown into the fiery furnace for not being willing to obey the king's orders and they were untouched because the presence of God was with them. And so when we are called to do the right thing, to stand in truth even though it might be difficult, of all times we become acutely aware of that presence that is with us, that carries us through, that gives us the courage to go on. So I was curious, what are the astrologers of this day, of today, what did they say about 2020? And I looked at some different sources and found quite a bit of overlap from various different angles. And so I wanted to share some of this with you because it seems pretty right on and helpful for our time. First of all, in the Chinese Zodiac, which comes from ChineseZodiac.org, it is the year of the rat. And so the rat is the first in the zodiac sign, so it is representation, it is, is newness, and the year of, the, of renewal is a part of what it re represents for, for us through the Chinese New Year. They say that 2020 will be a quite challenging year, especially health-wise and also financially. No kidding. <laughs> there will be obstacles and unpredictable situations. But here's the good news. They say the second half of the year is going to be much better. People will be forced, they say, to fight for their rights during this time of 2020. And remember that nothing worthy is ever easy. During the second half of the year, health will be much improved, energy and zest for life comes back in full force. Yay, God. <laughs> it may be difficult to make decisions, they predict, in the year of the rat, but don't let that cloud your mind and your soul. Trust. Trust your intuition. Now here's another vote for trust from Angels 2020, looking at the number as an angel number. Things will definitely change in your life and you not, might not be happy about it at first. I, I swear I'm not making these things up. <laughs> trust your guardian angels and let them lead the way and you will see purpose. Another vote for trust, to trust that innate wisdom, to trust that knowing inside of us. It guides us to take action, to speak in a certain way, to stop, to rest, to go within, to refill, whatever it is that we need. If we just stay attuned to that, we will know exactly what to do. And we will have a sense that we are not alone, that the presence of God is walking with us like it was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through the fiery furnace unscorched, untouched. And then finally, I saw the year of 2020 is super unique in numerology, and this is why, and this is by the Astro Twins who've been touted on all kinds of things like New York Times and Good Morning America and other media outlets. It, this particular article comes from mindbodygreen.com. And they say in numerology, so in numerology you take all the numbers and you add them up as single digits. So it makes, it gives us a sense of what is the universal feel of the year. And so this year's universal energy is four. And the Astro Twins tell us this about four. They said that life might be a bit weighty as, the, as a worldly energy moves for us. However, it's a call for long-term goals and, and uh, goal setting and also a call for leadership with integrity, for all of us to lead with a sense of integrity. 
So there are some ideas of how we can show up in this universal four year. And they are kind of our tried and true things, but it, I think they're worthy of reminding ourselves over and over again. One of them is to slow down, which I think for many in the pandemic, not all, because I know there's certainly many frontline workers and others who have been you know, very much called into action day after day. But there are many who have also had the opportunity to slow down a little bit more, to breathe, to have a little bit more spaciousness, maybe more time to pray and to ground. And we can always, even if we are very busy, find those times throughout our day to do that. It's, it's always important, but it's super important in times like these where fe it feels like the winds of change are constant. It was pretty interesting that it was windy here for several days too, because it just felt like that just added to the whole experience all around us, these, these hard winds that blew things off of our roof <laughs> um, and all kinds of things that probably at your house too. So one is to slow down, to stay present. Another is to know that there may be limitations and delays. Change it can be slow and it can be hard, especially changing old systems and ways of being that don't work for us anymore. And so just to recognize that, to, to be in the divine flow, to trust the divine order that is here for us, that supports us through the process. Another is to, to be willing to keep working through the issues, even, even when it's challenging. And they, the Astro Twins specifically mention that this year, issues of race and equality, gender, climate, economy, I mean the whole soup, right, will emerge to be evaluated though by all of us worldwide that this will be a real year for us to look at these big issues and evaluate together. Remember, it's a year of long-term planning and leadership with integrity. So these are, this is all a part of that working together for us. And that they say that with the tenacity of a four, we might just make headway, healing some of the divisiveness and disparity in our world. So, I know it's difficult during these times sometimes, but to, to know that we both have that power of the heart, the power of love, the power of divinity that grounds us and comforts us and refuels us, and also that power of wisdom. In our 12 powers teachings, these two are tandem powers. And the power of wisdom is that innate knowing that we do know what is ours to do. We may not know in any given moment, we may ask the question, but if we drop in, we'll know in this moment and next moment and maybe tomorrow or next week, what is the direction in which we are being called to go? So, you know, I'm not, I've not had much experience in things like advocacy and activism, but this week I was really called to go out and speak twice publicly on behalf of black lives and change that is needed. And did I do it perfectly? No way. <laughs> did I make mistakes, say things I didn't exactly mean to say exactly that way? Of course, you know, and then we get busy in our little critical minds. And so I wanna encourage you, to have courage, to take heart, to step out, to be willing, to allow ourselves to be uncomfortable if that's how we feel called. And to know that it is because we have the, our hearts in the right place and we have this divinity in us that will guide us that it's all gonna be okay. <laughs> It's not about us anyway. It's about a much bigger movement, a much greater shift universally. It can happen, it is happening, it will happen, and you will find your way as to how you fit into that. Maybe it's more prayer, and maybe it's sending out blessings or visualizations, maybe it's getting out in the front lines of protests and speaking up or helping change things from a governmental standpoint. The voices of faith are needed to make societal change. That I know for sure. It makes a big difference when, when together there is a banding of, of people of faith, of faith leaders to speak out because that's a voice of morality, a voice of, of holding up these values we hold dear that people can hear through that lens. And so um, I, I invite you to consider what is yours to do as a person of, of faith, a person who believes in, if, it, if the faith that you believe in is human potential, 
that's something to believe in. Or if it's believing in a, in a greater God, a source, a, a sense of us being a part of that, like our principles in unity, where the first principle is God is my source, and the se- or God is our source, and the second is that, that we are divine, that we are made in the image and the likeness of that source, and that we channel and embody that truth, that divinity, that power, that love, that wisdom. We all have something valuable to offer right now. So I want to encourage you to search your heart and your soul and to find what is yours to do and then to just do it. It may be clumsy. It may be messy. You make mistakes. You know what? People would rather have you speaking out on their behalf and making mistakes than staying quiet. And so that is a huge piece. You know, I, I heard Al Sharpton say in the memorial service that he did for George Floyd that, um, um, that what did he say exactly? He said that people say they want peace, but they really want quiet. And so we need to know the difference. And peace can sometimes come in a loud way. And it is, and it's here, and it's happening. So another thing that we can do is to, and it's really important during these times, is to keep implementing good wellness and spiritual practices, to keep, you know, nurturing ourselves through prayer, through meditation, through eating good food, through drinking plenty of water, through exercising. You know how to take care of yourself. We need to take care of ourselves. That's really an important piece through all of this. And also to listen, to listen deeply to ourselves, to the divinity within us, and to each other. Try listening without judging or bantering back your opinion. Try listening from that deeper place with your whole self, not just with your ears, but your whole being, your heart and your soul and your whole being. When we listen in that way, we become like an open sieve. It's a whole different kind of listening. We look with a softer focus. And you can literally intend and do this by softening your focus when you're looking at others. And when we soften our focus, we see more. And we see, actually, a lot of times it's easier to see the divinity and the energy field that is there for somebody when we just soften our focus a little bit. And then finally, almost finally, (laughs) don't cling to the old ways because the old ways are dying out. Remember the the Israel the, the Hebrews had to you know to get into the land of Canaan the the old generation had to die off the old ways are dying off and it may because it's familiar and comfortable we may want to reach back and cling and bring them back but you know some of those old ways are destructive some of those old ways are counterproductive we have an 18th century police force i heard Sharif Abdullah say this week and, and we have military tactics there that it just isn't working. It doesn't make all the police officers bad. It makes a system that needs to change. We need to look at all of our systems, one at a time, maybe. One's here for us to look at now, and so that's where the energy is. And that is fo- following the divine flow when we follow where the energy is and then ask, where's our place in this, in this flowing divine energy that's present for me now. And lastly, to come back to the big picture over and over. And what is the big picture? Love. Love. To ground ourselves in love, to steep ourselves in love, to, to, you know, in whatever ways that works for you. You know, yesterday I had to lay upon the earth. You know, I had to get grounded to the earth and and um, and try different things. You know, I sat before my altar and I could just feel all this emotion happening. And this morning, as I sat before my altar, finally some break of of emotion let me release. You know, some of what had been built up in me the last few days. And so, it, all of us are different. All of us are unique in the ways that we will express and find our ourselves and our in our footing here. But, but love is that universal principle. Love is that thing that if we come back home again and again to the heart, we can just feel ourselves inf- infilled, enfolded, surrounded by, and, and buoyed up by the power of love. So if nothing else to steep ourselves just for a few moments in breathing in love, I am love. 
I am loved. I am the very expression of love. Whatever affirmation might work for you, but just to be in that, that can do wonders for us, to place us in that flow of divine love. And then to feel a sense of protection in that as we move about the world and step out maybe and do things we might not have dared to do before. The world needs us. Black and brown people need white people right now and vice versa. We need each other. You know, that's always a big part of, of who we are in unity. It's our namesake, unity. It's our namesake to be unified, to be connected, to be a force of love together, not a force of fear, and to help make a police force that is based in love and protection, not fear. We can do this. We can make a difference, get educated, come to understand, and speak out. So in conclusion, I'd like to use a quote by Martin Luther King Jr., of course. It's always good to invoke Martin Luther King Jr., especially when a new round of civil rights movement is happening. And he said that darkness can now drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Only light can do that. The kind of light by which we now can see more clearly an illumination of liberty and justice for all. And he also said that hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And so it's the kind of love that we drop our anchor into, the divine love that buoys us up, that, that allows us to keep moving forward and to feel the energy that channels through us. It becomes a seamless flow rather than a weary walk when we are anchored and steeped in that kind of love. Our fears may end up being revealed as unfounded in the presence of that love, and hate certainly will fade away. So let's walk together, let's ground in divine love together, let's follow that inner light. I wanna close out with two things, one, an affirmation we can speak together, and then also a prayer from Silent Unity. So first, let's speak our affirmation for this week together. I ground in divine love, I follow divine light. I ground in divine love, I follow divine light. And from Silent Unity, our international prayer ministry, which you can call anytime, 1-800-NOW-PRAY, and get somebody to pray with you on the line. They offer this prayer, and I thought it would be nice to close out with it too, because it certainly feels appropriate for our time. So together, let's speak this as well. In the midst of pain, I affirm healing. In the midst of broken hearts, I affirm love. God is the presence of peace that knows no bounds. That's the truth. So it is. <laughs>